You see this guy? That's a Venturine. He's a piece of shit. This guy has almost 2 million HP and memory of chaos. Not only does this fool love to waste your time with his annoying RNG mechanics and energy sapping moves, but he also eats up your memory turbulence with his dice minigame. I'm not trying to use it on the dice, I'm trying to use it on you, you fuck. You know what? I'm not even gonna pull for you anymore. I'm, I'm gonna save the rest of my jades for Sam. And Robin. And Topaz. Maybe Jade. I reset this boss so many freaking times that at some point I had to ask myself, is this? Is this even worth it? Okay, okay, I'll admit I'm being a little bit dramatic. Honestly, Eventrian as a boss alone isn't that bad. He was fine in the story, and if they add him to simulated universe, then it probably won't even be that bad either because of all the blessings you can get. But what makes it so different from Memory of Chaos? They're not time gated. Okay, well, simulated universe is kind of time gated because if you can't beat the boss or elite within apparently 32 cycles, then they go berserk. But at that point, you're probably just doing something wrong. I'm just kidding. It's not your fault. My point is, you have all the time in the world when you fight them elsewhere, but you are severely limited in memory of chaos, which has the rewards that people want. Not only in the cycles, but also for how long this memory of chaos is available for. This can be infuriating for players that are so close to getting the full 36 stars, but just not quite there yet. Now, normally bosses in Memory of Chaos have other enemies on the field, which can either be a good thing or a bad thing. It's a bad thing because that means more enemies to kill, and even worse so if you don't have AoE attacks. However, it's a good thing because more attacks from the enemy means more energy recharge, which means more ultimate uptime, unless their attack saps your energy. I think these pros outweigh the cons, but unfortunately, Aventurine is all alone. He has no reinforcements, and to top it off, he has an AoE attack that reduces the entire party's energy like the TV mob, but at least with that enemy, it can actually give you back energy. There is counterplay to that kit, but with Aventurine, you just have to bend over and then there's the dice minigame. You pretty much want to have a character or two to have some sort of AoE attack so you can basically guarantee a win against the RNG. This goes for support units as well, but of course it depends on your team comp. Pela can win the minigame easily as opposed to someone like Sparkle who only has a single target attack, but RNG is still RNG. This hasn't happened to me, but using an AoE attack just to lose to RNG anyway would just feel bad. Oh, okay, okay. This is, now get my ultimate back. And then when Jill does this, She's gonna win as well. What the f is that? That was three dices. That was three dices. Yeah, he got a draw, so he didn't lose. But guess what? Not only does Jinglu not receive full energy for her ultimate now, but also a stack of Jinglu's enhanced state goes to waste, and now she's naked. Huh? And also, if you don't plan accordingly, you can end up using the memory turbulence on the dice, which does absolutely nothing for you, by the way. It's like the thing never existed for that cycle. You have to make sure you don't use too many moves before Aventurine does this stupid RNG gimmick on your team. You want to be at like 3 or less stacks before the minigame starts, otherwise you'll be forced to attack, which increments the counter by 1. Unless you have skills that aren't attacks, then you can stall the counter so that the memory turbulence actually hits Aventurine once the minigame is over. But be careful having too few attacks. Attacks. Sometimes you'll need to use a skill to buff your carries, which means not being able to add a stack to the memory turbulence. But also, if your characters are too slow, then you're not going to have enough turns in the cycle to be able to proc the MOC buff anyway. That's why follow-up attacks are so effective for this memory of chaos. Characters like Clara, Topaz, Dr. Ratio, even March 7th are extremely valuable for these fights. Sometimes all you need is that one or two extra follow-up attacks to proc that sweet, sweet turbulence. Supports like Pela who's ult attacks enemies and has a low cost to cast is super beneficial as well. I've only been talking about Aventurine for all of this, but the first half also just blows. There's that stupid dinosaur that takes reduced damage if it's not weakness broken. Not being able to do the full amount of damage off rip means having to save your ultimate until that toughness bar is gone. Bringing in the corresponding elemental type is pretty much a must now unless you have Silver Wolf, which at that point, go crazy. If you don't have Ruan Mei though, you'll be at a disadvantage. It's kind of like with Aventurine. They both just want to waste your time and resources. Honestly, compared to Aventurine, the dinosaur isn't so bad except for the fact that it's paired with one of the most annoying mobs in the game, the Frigid Prowler. If you don't have a debuff cleanser, then you have to kill this thing before it gets to attack you at all. If you don't, you'll be hit with Deep Freeze, which reduces Ice Resistance by 20% and Speed by 12%. This thing can stack, but also it'll never go away. 
You have to cleanse this debuff. If you don't, then your characters are gonna be hella slow all the way to your fight with Kokolia and another stupid f***ing dinosaur which is less than ideal. These mobs will slow you all the way down to D tier with Arlen. If you're using Fu Shuan on this side, then you have to go for the kill. This becomes counterintuitive though if your DPS relies on AoE attacks because this motherfucker isn't weakness broken yet, so then they take less damage. So now you have to find a way to kill the Prowler while also finding a way to deplete this guy's toughness bar at the same time so you deal the max amount of damage. Yes, that means having to use your brain. But if you have Sila, you just f***ing nuke this guy and call it a day. Wait, I didn't crit? Bruh. Let me try again. I'll free you from your disappear among the sea of butterflies. Illusions of the past. Easy. Sila number one. Where am I going with this? See, all these mechanics while being unique can be very tedious to deal with for the average player. If you can beat MOC 12 then by all means, of course it's worth it. But not everyone can beat the last stage or even MOC 11 or 10. Not everyone is a day one player and not everyone has their characters built. It's a nuisance for those who don't have the damage to clear their stage fast enough because of all the gimmicks. It's not worth banging your head against a wall if you're constantly getting frustrated. It's okay to give up if your efforts aren't being rewarded. You don't even have to give up entirely. Memory of Chaos lasts for like, what, 41 days? You have time to hit the relic mines and keep farming, if you're lucky. And if you can't beat it, so what? You're only missing out on only 60 jades every refresh? That's not even enough for a single pull. You know how easily you can get 60 jades in a single day? by doing a day's worth of dailies, that's it. Unless you're a sweaty player or you want to feel some sort of accomplishment for the amount of effort that you put into this game, there's practically no reason to stress over only 60 jades by attempting to beat the hardest end game challenge to date. And for what else? Only 100 jade feathers? Most of the things in the shop are farmable with trailblaze power. You're not missing out on anything. Sometimes you just gotta step back and remember, this game should be fun, not be a chore. I'm kind of just speaking from personal experience. As someone who never posts for Lycones or Eidolons, this Memory of Chaos has been, I don't want to say hard, but it's been tedious. The first half was fine, I beat it in 3 cycles, but the second half took 7. Yeah, I had to use my brain a bit more than usual, but to me the second half was more of a DPS check than a brain check. Don't get the wrong idea, I enjoy harder content even if it means inflating their health pool. It gives me a reason to make my already strong characters even stronger. I'm just trying to say that it isn't the end of the world if you can't clear it. There's plenty of time to improve and there's always going to be a next time. A new memory of chaos that hopefully doesn't have a venturing in it. Anyway, that's all for me. Thanks for watching. Peace.